In this video, we're going to encapsulate the level and the experience point properties. Eventually, I want to add the ability for level to affect the combat, so a level 10 player can easily kill a level 1 monster, but a level 1 player will have a difficult time killing a level 1 monster. So in order to do that, we need to have the level property available to monsters and to players, and I might as well make it available to traders in case we ever give the ability to fight traders. So we'll move the level property to the living entity class, the base class for everything, and we'll keep the experience points in the player class because we're only going to let the player gain experience. However, we are going to encapsulate that so no other classes have direct access to that property. We'll start by opening the solution and going to the living entity class, and we're going to add the level property. If you want to, you can just copy and paste this from the player class. The property is here on lines 58 through 66, and we have the backing variable underscore level on line 16. Notice that for the setter, we made it a protected set instead of a private set. Because it's a protected set, that means we can set this value inside the living entity class, or we can set it from any of the child classes from the monster, the trader, or the player class. Since the player is the only thing that's going to have experience points change, which will cause level to change, we need to make this protected so player has access to it. Now that we have the level property in the living entity class, we need to have a way to set it. And in the constructor here, I added a new parameter, level, with a default value of one. For right now, we're going to assume all monsters and traders are level one, in the future, we'll worry about that when we make the game more complex. And then on line 88, we set the level property to the parameter value that was passed in. We're also going to make a change to the maximum hit points property. We're going to change the setter to a protected set so the player class can modify the maximum hit points when the player gains a new level. We're going to say it's every level the player gets 10 for their maximum hit points. So level one player has a maximum hit points of 10, level two has maximum hit points of 20, and so on. If we wanted to, we could leave the setter private and then create a new function set maximum hit points that is protected in the living entity class, but that's not really gonna gain much since the only thing that function would do is call the setter here as a private setter. So I'm okay with having this a protected setter for right now. Next, we'll go to the player class, and we can remove the level property and the underscore level backing variable, since we now have that in living entity. Then we're going to add a new event here on line 42. It's a public event on leveled up. This way the UI can watch for this event, and we'll raise this event when the player levels up, so the UI can do whatever it needs to do. Then we'll encapsulate the experience points property on line 28, we'll make the setter private, and we'll add a new function, the function here on line 67 through 70, add experience. Takes in an integer parameter of how many experience points to add, and then adds that to the property. We have another new function on lines 72 through 84. This is set level and maximum hit points. Anytime the player's experience points change, we're going to call this function. This function saves the current level in the original level variable. It sets the level property to experience points divided by 100 plus 1. Since this is an integer, it's going to round down. And then it's going to check if the new level is different from the original level. Then we want to update the maximum hit points with level times 10. And we want to raise the unleveled up event for anything that's listening. And this function is going to be called inside the experience point setter. So when we set the experience points to a new value, we call this to update the level if needed and the maximum hit points if needed. Because the only place that the set level and maximum hit points function is called is inside the setter, we could just put the code right here instead of having a separate function but I think we probably will need this separate function in the future. You normally don't want to start adding in a bunch of new functions for features that you're not using, but I think in this case it's small enough that it's safe 
And this also adds a little bit of clarity because I don't like my setters to be too full of code. I'd rather have them call a function that has a better name and a better description. I find that a little easier to understand. So now that we have the call to the set level and maximum hit points inside the experience point setter, anytime the add experience function is called and experience points is updated, we'll recheck the level and maximum hit points. Now we're ready to go into the game session class. Because we made the setter of the experience points property private, we have to go and change the code to call the new add experience points function. And that's on line 193. We call current player dot add experience now when the player completes a quest. And on line 305, when the player kills a monster, we call current player dot add experience to give them the monster killing reward experience points. And you should also notice that in the complete quest at location function, I've now made sure that the raise message is before we add experience or receive gold or add item to inventory. We want to do this so that we raise the message to the UI before the object changes. Just in case the change to the object affects the message, it shouldn't make any difference here, but that's going to be the pattern that I want to follow for any time we modify something on the player object or the monster object, and we need to raise a message. We'll raise the message first, then we'll do the modification. And finally, we need to have the game session class subscribe to the players on leveled up event. And we're going to create a new function here on lines 317 to 320 on current player leveled up. This will raise a message that tells the player you are now level whatever. And we're going to subscribe to the players on leveled up event in the current player setter, just like we did with the on killed event. So we unsubscribe to the on leveled up event from the function, our new function that raises the message when we set a new current player. And then we resubscribe after we've set the new current player backing variable to the new current player object. Now that we have everything in place, Let's run the game and make sure that it still works. I'll go and fight 20 snakes since that's what we need to level up. Okay, and here we killed the 20th snake. So our experience points are 100. We Got the message here, you are now level two. The player's stats show it's at level two. The player's current hit points are three, so let's fight until the player gets killed. Now the player's killed, gets sent home, and we see they were completely healed to 20 hit points because now their maximum hit points is 20 since they're level two. I think that's all the cleanup we're going to do for right now. We'll clean up the code continually as we go through the game. That's a good habit to get into. But for right now, this is good enough to go on to the next step, which is going to be adding some unit tests. In order to make sure that we don't break the game with any changes, we want to have some automated unit tests. So the next few videos are going to be creating the test project, creating the unit test, making sure they all run correctly, making sure we have good code coverage. We have a test for most of our logic. And then we'll get back to adding more features to the game. If you're watching the video on YouTube, in the description, I'll have a link to the support page, which will have all the source code. If you have any questions, please leave a comment there, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks.